So this is the first plane. The second plane is flux perpendicular to YC plane. YC plane is this plane. Which plane is YC plane? This is Y. This is Z. This is X. Right? So YZ plane is the whole plane here. You have the flux going perpendicular to this plane going out. What is this flux? Is phi of what? Phi of what? We know that there's two subscript, right? The second subscript supposed to be related to direction of momentum. Right now we consider Z momentum. The first one is direction of the transport, the transport of the flux. Right now this transport in which direction? X direction, right? So it's XZ. Again, this one also XZ. It's coming in, if you look at this picture, YC plane is this line. So XC coming in, is coming in at position of X any X. It's going out at X plus the thickness of the shell, which is X plus delta X. Okay? So I'm to write down here at X, this one as X plus delta X. So what is in here? In is the flux multiplied by the area perpendicular to the flux. Flux itself is phi xz at x. What is the area? WL, right? Because the width here is W, the length here is L. So it's W multiplied by L. That's the area. And you know that VXC is consisting of three ter two terms, tau XZ plus rho VX VZ at X, WL. And VX is already zero. So we can drop this term. In other words, there is no convective flux in XZ direction. Okay? But this one is not zero, so we have to keep this one. Alright? Output, out, supposed to go this for this one. It looks the same. The only difference is location. The out is going at x plus delta x. The area remains the same. And again, vx is zero. Okay? The last plane would be one perpendicular to YZ plane. If you draw a picture, it looks something like this. YZ plane is this direction. I'm sorry. XZ plane. Right? You can, just for the sake of completeness, you can say that input in this plane is basically phi, phi what? phi y x, I'm sorry, y z, right? Coming in at, at, at y equal to zero, because the direction is, look something like this, this is y direction. It's coming in at this plane, this plane is located at y equal to zero, okay? 
multiplied by the area perpendicular to it, the area shaded here is equal to the thickness of the shell, which is delta x, multiplied by the length here, which is L. So it's L delta x, right? Do you see that? Now, then phi y z is equal to tau y z plus rho v y v z at y equal to zero, L delta x. And y tau y z was already determined to be zero by Newton's law. Okay? Or if you recall, tau y z can be written using Newton's law to be minus mu v y by I'm sorry v z by d y plus v y by d z. Okay, we know for sure v y here is zero, and we know that even though v y v z is not zero, it is not function of y. So the whole thing here is zero. That means this term tau y z is zero. For this term, for convective term, v y is zero. So everything here is zero. So there is no in, there is no out, basically. All right? So we consider in and out for all three pairs, for all three dire directions. The rest of the term in the balance are forces, right? So the summation of the force that we usually consider in the balance is normally gravity force, okay? And gravity force from your, from your fundamental physics is weight. Gravity affects weight, right? And weight is equal to mg. M is mass. The, pro, the point here is, or the, the question would be, the mass of what? Mass of fluid. Actually, the correct answer would be the mass of fluid within the shell. Okay? Because right now we're doing balance around the shell. So the force is supposed to be acting on the shell itself. So the mass of the fluid within the shell should equal to density of the fluid multiplied by volume of the fluid or volume of the shell, okay? So what is volume of the shell? W times L times delta X. So W L delta X, that's the volume. So you multiply by density, it turns to be mass. And multiply by G, that's turned into force or weight. But right now, G itself is going in this direction, right? It's not in either Z or X direction. So if you take this one and divide them into two parts, the angle here is beta, okay? So this G here is supposed to be G cosine beta. This one would be G sine beta. Which one should we use? Should we use both? or we use either one. If you say either one, which one is correct? How to answer that question? First of all, you must realize, right now we're doing balance for Z momentum. For Z momentum only. We do not deal with X momentum, Y momentum because there's none, right? So in Z momentum, which one affects Z momentum? 
z momentum is going in which direction in this direction right you have z momentum going in this direction so the force affects z momentum supposed to be this one g cosine beta this one does not affect z momentum okay so the g here is supposed to be g cosine beta if you check the unit w is meter l is meter delta x is meter okay rho here is kilogram per cubic meter g here is meter per second square cosine has no unit so the overall unit complies or consistent with unit of momentum rate all right Now, once we already determine all terms, we will put them into the balance. First, I'm going to combine in minus out for each direction. Okay? In this first direction, in minus out should equal to these two terms subtracted by each other. So these two terms would have W delta X in common. This is common term. The first term is pressure. PZ as Z equal to zero minus PZ as Z equal to L. This is corresponding to these two terms combined, right? And then we have these two terms right now we see here is scalar right it's scalar because this is just a component in the tensor so by itself it is scalar so you have two scalar numbers multiplied by each other so I can write down Vz squared just for short okay 1 as z equal to 0 minus the other one as z equal to l okay this is the first one then I can erase this the second one is in minus out in yz plane in this one so these two terms subtract by each other you have only term of tau and the common term would be WL tau XZ at X minus tau XZ at X plus Delta X okay then I can erase this 